Here's Matt Powell to debunk Bill Nye with a bunch of creationist nonsense. Once in a while I get people that really, or that claim they don't believe in evolution. And my response generally is, well, why not? Really, why not? Because evolution asserts that we all descended from fish. There is no evidence to support such a claim. So the fact that the deeper you look in the fossil record, the more fish-like vertebrates get until you reach a layer in which the only vertebrates are fish isn't evidence of that? The fact that the genetic similarities are exactly what you would expect them to be if we were descended from fish isn't evidence? The fact that transitional fossils between fish and land animals were predicted to have certain features and then fossils that had exactly those features were eventually found and found in the exact fossil layer where they were predicted to be found isn't evidence? We descended from Adam and Eve, two humans not fish. How do the fossil and genetic records back that idea up? We've even discovered remains of humans that existed thousands of years ago, and we've found that they were much more fit than humans are today. In the context of evolution, fitness is defined as the ability of a population to survive and reproduce. I'm sure Matt believes the Bible stories about people living for 900 years or whatever, so that's why he thinks they were more fit for survival. But even if that were really the case, the population was much smaller than it is now, so they were clearly not more fit for reproduction than we are today. What that means is that we are devolving. We started out with a good set of genetics at the beginning, and we have degraded since. Then why hasn't the population decreased? Even if you think people lived for hundreds of years a few thousand years ago, for which there's no evidence, why is it that life expectancies have measurably gone up over the last several hundred years? If we are genetically degrading, shouldn't life expectancies be declining, and shouldn't the population be shrinking? Your world just becomes fantastically complicated when you don't believe in evolution. What part of believing that we descended from apes makes our worldview less complicated? All of the creationist explanations for the evidence from geology and cosmology for an old universe toss Occam's razor out the window. You have to assume a miracle occurred to explain how the heat generated by geological processes didn't boil off the oceans if they happened in only a few thousand years rather than a few billion. You have to assume either a miracle to explain how it is that we can see light from other stars that are billions of light years away, or you have to assume that somehow light can accelerate past C, despite all of the evidence to the contrary. You have to assume that phenomena like these, which make the universe look like it's billions of years old, are actually just producing an illusion of being that old, instead of the much less complicated explanation that the universe looks old because it is old. Teaching young ones that they evolved from primates will cause confusion in their lives. Well, it certainly will if you imply that humans are not themselves primates. A primate is any organism that is a mammal which can fully rotate its shoulder joints. Kids are definitely going to be confused if you tell them effectively that humans don't produce milk and or we can't rotate our shoulder joints. It makes certain people feel subhuman when you tell them that they're nothing more than an evolved rat. Why would you feel subhuman if you are told that your ancestors evolved into humans? And don't you believe that humans are just dust that God blew into? But telling a child that God loves them and that they were created in his image will help them to thrive and to succeed in life. Don't you also tell them that they are inherently fallen creatures that have to confess their sins to God in order to be forgiven so they don't receive the eternity of torment that they rightly deserve? All right, so now he's gonna try to give us some evidence for evolution. And so he's gonna rattle off a few things that he considers to be facts. Let's check them out, let's debunk them one at a time. Here are these ancient dinosaur bones or fossils. Okay, so right off the bat he mentions dinosaurs. Well, dinosaur fossils actually show us that they died recently because we find dinosaur blood cells that could not have lasted for millions of years. Where do you get the idea that they could not have lasted for millions of years? There are known mechanisms that can, in fact, chemically preserve these tissues for that long. If you put some material that's biodegradable inside of an airtight jar and then put that airtight jar in another airtight jar and in another airtight jar, it doesn't matter how many times you seal something that's bioorganic. It's still gonna degrade, it's still gonna deteriorate. That's what we know for a fact. Those are laws of science. Yes, and these tissues have degraded and deteriorated, they just haven't been entirely fossilized. What makes you think that a few thousand years is not enough time to completely fossilize these tissues, but several million years is? We find dinosaur blood cells, we find nerve cells, we find DNA from dinosaurs, histones, keratin, 
skin pigments, the list goes on and on. In fact, there are 16 types of bioorganic materials that are found in dinosaur bones. They died out recently. Okay, do the math and give a calculation of how recently. Tell me what you think the rates of decay are for these tissues, tell me what observations on which you base those rates, and calculate how long exactly you think these tissues take to completely fossilize. Finding bioorganic materials in their graves suggests that they died in the recent past, not in the distant past. Define the distinction between distant past and recent past. Give me a precise calculation for how long you think soft tissues fossilize based on empirical data. Here is um, radioactivity. So what he's referring to here is radiometric rock dating. And what I find interesting is we've never been able to accurately date a rock that we know the age of. For example, we've seen volcanoes erupt. We've seen the lava flow down the side of these mountains. The lava then turns into igneous rock. Those rocks are young, but what I find interesting is that when you send in rocks to be radiometrically tested to see how old they are, these labs will send back results indicating that these rocks formed millions of years ago. It's ludicrous. Radiometric isotopes can be created in a lab, and the next day they date as millions of years old. So is radiometric dating reliable? Can it be used to date the age of the Earth? Well, certainly not if you're using the argon dating mentioned in the article you showed. The problem with argon dating is that argon is a gas, and some of it can escape the rocks being tested, so it's hard to get a precise measurement of how much of it has decayed. The much more common way that the Earth's age is measured is by looking at how much lead is in a uranium layer. The only way that lead can get into a uranium layer is by the uranium turning into lead over time. The only way this method can be inaccurate is if all of the tests that resulted in the same date somehow coincidentally became contaminated by the exact same amount, or there is some unknown mechanism by which lead can get into a uranium layer. Neither of those explanations are the most probable. Think about that. The radiometric isotopes that we find in rocks supposedly indicate how old the rocks are. Well, if you're creating brand new ones, and they're dating as millions of years old, the following day, just after you created them, is it a rational assumption to make that rocks that contain these same isotopes can be dated accurately using radiometric dating processes? Please show me an example of uranium samples being created in a lab and then having billions of years worth of lead in them by the very next day. Absolutely not. It has a 0% success rate. Like I said, rocks of known age that we know the ages of have never been accurately dated by radiometric dating processes. And that's a fact. That is, in fact, not a fact. Rocks from the Mount Vesuvius eruption have been radiometrically dated and the results showed that they were formed about 1900 years ago, which is when the historical records say the eruption happened. I've got a lot of sources that can back that up as well. Well, I've got a source that refutes it. Unlike you, I'll put that source in the description of my video. Here are distant stars that are just like the, our star, but that are at a different point in their life cycle. Yeah, distant starlight isn't an issue. The speed of light is not constant. We can't measure a specific rate of how long it takes for light to travel. It can change depending on certain environmental factors. First of all, Bill didn't mention the time it takes for light to get here. He mentioned that stars are at different points in their life cycle. Secondly, while it's true that the speed that light travels can be slowed below C, it can't be accelerated past C, which is a constant. Which is what would need to happen in order for light to get here from Andromeda in only a few thousand years. The idea of deep time, of this of billions of years, uh, explains so much of the world around us. If you try to ignore that, your, your worldview just becomes crazy, it's just uh, untenable, self-inconsistent. He asserts here that deep time explains so much of the world around us. Deep time explains nothing, because if you look at the universe, everything is winding down. Earth is slowing down in its rotation. The moon is getting farther away from our planet. The sun is burning down. Yes, lots of things degrade. For example, uranium degrades into lead over time. And since we know the rate at which it degrades, we can calculate how long the uranium found in the Earth has been degrading. And scientists calculate that they have been degrading for about 4.5 billion years. Our solar system has not existed for millions of years. That is a lie. Because we know the rate at which uranium turns into lead, we can tell by looking at the uranium in meteorites that the solar system has also been around for about 4.5 billion years. 
Deep time does not explain anything. And I say to the grown-ups, if you want to deny evolution and live in your in your uh, world that's completely inconsistent with everything we observe in the universe, that's fine. But don't make your kids do it, because we need them. We need scientifically literate voters and taxpayers for the future. We need people that can, uh, we need engineers that can build stuff, solve problems. Well, that I can agree with. We need scientifically literate voters and taxpayers. However, evolution is anti-science propaganda. People really think that we're evolving? Just look at the human genome, what's happening. Look at cancer rates, autism rates, everything that we don't want as far as diseases are increasing worldwide in human populations. One of the reasons cancer rates are rising is because a major cause of cancer is simply getting older, and more people than ever before are surviving into their high cancer risk years. A major contributor to autism rates is greater public awareness, leading to more people suspecting that they have it and consequently seeking a diagnosis. There are also likely environmental factors that could be increasing rates of disease generally. What reason do we have to believe that they are caused by genetic de-evolution? To everyone who helps me out on Patreon, you're a big help, thanks so much.